Act 5 begins in a graveyard with some grave diggers who are hard at work. They are discussing the moral issues of suicide when Horatio and Hamlet arrive. Hamlet is feeling pretty emo and picks up a skull, asking who it belongs to. One of the grave diggers tells him that it belonged to Yorick, who used to be the court jester. This causes Hamlet to think about how we all turn to dust in the end, so nothing we do really matters. A group of mourners enters, including the king and queen. When Laertes arrives, we realise that the woman the grave diggers are preparing the grave for is Ophelia. The priest is refusing to grant Ophelia a Christian burial as she committed suicide. Laertes isn't having any of it and demands a proper service. The priest refuses, but allows Ophelia to be buried on consecrated ground as a compromise. Laertes is still pretty cut. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks and back to the video. Gertrude is also very upset. She really had a soft spot for Ophelia and hoped that one day she would be her daughter-in-law. Hamlet flips out and attacks Laertes. The two try to kill each other before they are separated. It looks like their differences will be settled soon, once and for all. Later on, when he is calmer, Hamlet talks to Horatio about how he returned to Denmark. He reveals that he found a letter from Claudius to the King of England, asking him to kill Hamlet as soon as he can. However, Hamlet was too clever and switched the letters for others that asked the king to kill Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. A servant arrives to tell Hamlet that Laertes has challenged him to a duel. Hamlet has realised that everything happens as it is meant to happen, so he accepts the challenge, even though he may lose. At the duel, Laertes is armed with his poisoned sword and he and Hamlet face off. Hamlet apologises for his outburst at Ophelia's funeral and says that it was his grief talking. He also apologises for killing Polonius and asks for Laertes' forgiveness. Things happen pretty quickly now, so listen carefully. The duel begins and Hamlet scores a hit against Laertes. In celebration, Claudius drops a pearl into Hamlet's cup of wine, saying it is a gift for his nephew. However, The pearl has been poisoned. Remember, this is Claudius' insurance policy, just in case Laertes loses. Hamlet isn't thirsty, but Gertrude wants to toast her son, so she drinks from the poisoned cup. Oh dear. The duel begins again, and Laertes scores a hit against Hamlet. They drop their swords and, unwittingly, pick up the wrong ones. Hamlet now has the poison sword and scores a hit against Laertes. Suddenly, Gertrude falls down dead, and Laertes is so shocked that he tells Hamlet all about the poison swords. Furious, Hamlet finally plunges his sword into Claudius, killing him. Hamlet and Laertes, nearly dead at this point, forgive one another just before Laertes dies. Horatio runs to comfort his friend when a servant announces that Fortinbras has defeated the Poles and is now marching in Denmark. Hamlet instructs Horatio to ensure that Fortinbras becomes the new king of Denmark, then dies. Fortinbras arrives to find the court full of dead bodies. He announces that Hamlet was a great man and will be buried as such. So the play ends in a pretty bleak way with only the hope that Fortinbras might be able to turn things around in Denmark to keep us going. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on Hamlet, check out our context analysis of the play 